it's going to be two of us leading you through the last hour of the day. Um, myself and uh, my friend uh, Ryan D'Souza from uh, AECOM. Um, so uh, how we're going to do this is I'm going to start off um, and give a little bit of um, a broader perspective on the MTEM industry um, and how it sort of fits in with uh, the work that uh, we do um, at the Carbon War, uh, where I work, um, which is uh, an entrepreneurial initiative founded by Sir Richard Branson of the Virgin Group. Um, focused on environmental uh, um, technologies. So um, it's a little bit different than perhaps a, a lot of what you heard today. So hopefully that's something that um, is a good thing. And um, I'm going to frame it in such a way that will um, lead to uh, Ryan's discussion um, as a practitioner in the field um, to give you a, a few specific examples of the work that, that he's doing at AECOM. Um, so first of all, uh, you know, why am I here? So we, we embarked on a research project uh, about a year ago uh, in partnership with AT&T, um, focused on trying to identify the opportunity to reduce emissions um, using machine-to-machine -machine technologies and looking at where that's actually going to yield um, positive returns for uh, the industry and for um, the end user, for, for the clients. Uh, we released the report at, at uh, the Mobile World Congress in Barcelona in uh, February, I believe, um, and here's the front, the front cover uh, that you see. Uh, so to start off, I think I'll, I'll just play a short animation that we produced um, to give an overview of uh, our perspective on, on this important topic. And then I want to walk you through a few of the, the key trends that we see um, in this industry and why we really believe that this is one of the, the key issues that the environmental movement needs to keep track of and, and really be promoting as, as a solution to climate change. In the 1990s, information and communication technologies have changed the way we work, live, and play. The birth of the internet massively benefited both our professional and personal lives. It allowed the world's economy to become a single interdependent system operating consistently and instantaneously. It also transformed the way we communicate providing cheaper, simpler, and faster global communications than ever before. The technologies that facilitate people-to-people -people communication have certainly advanced very far. We can now benefit from exciting new technologies that allow for machine-to-machine -machine communication, M2M. In M2M, sensors and networks allow all the parts of a physical system to communicate directly with each other. AT&T partnered with the Carbon War Room to explore ways to accelerate the adoption of M2M technologies. We found that machine-to-machine -machine communication will help the world do more with less. It will help us meet the needs of a growing world, in particular the need for more energy as the number of cities grows and the population of existing cities expands we can use M2M to grow and prosper in a more sustainable manner for the planet. M2M will reduce our need for fossil fuels, which will help us in our efforts to tackle global warming by reducing greenhouse gas emissions. But how does it work? Take a farmer, for example. Sensors in the ground can tell the farmer the most efficient ways to water and fertilize their soil, making the best use of the farmer's time and resources. Other sensors can monitor seed and fertilizer inventory levels, automatically reordering these materials and others from suppliers. Now consider one such supplier and their freight trucks. The supplier receives the farmer's order from the M2M system, which also automatically alerts the buying department that stock replenishment will be needed once the order is fulfilled. An M2M transport logistics system then calculates the most efficient way to ship the order to the farmer, working out the most suitable type of vehicle to use and the most efficient route from the warehouse to the farm. The system also informs the farmer of his expected delivery date and time. Once the order is delivered, M2M technology lets the supplier know that this has been done successfully and can immediately generate an invoice for the farmer all done very efficiently. This leads to major money and energy savings for the farmer, the supplier, and the shipper. 
M2M technologies can benefit all industries, from energy production to agriculture, from transportation to building management, from healthcare to industrial manufacturing. Think about the opportunities for your business. M2M communication will save billions of dollars and thousands of hours, and it will help you make more accurate and better decisions. It will help your business keep its competitive edge and strengthen customer relationships in a highly competitive global economy. The new era of M2M is dawning. Let these technologies work for your business. I realize that you know, many of you in the room and, and those of you attending this event are, are truly experts in this field, and, and a lot of this may you know, be really a, a flair for the dramatic um, from our communications department. But I think one of the important things that we've realized over the last year or so looking at this issue is that there's a real need for, for a translation exercise um, to explain the great work that you and your colleagues are doing to the outside world um, and to really make the case for why these technologies are compelling, um, not just from a business perspective, but uh, from a social and environmental perspective as well. So just a few observations you know, from my time here over the last two days um, that I want to share with you before we move on. Um, first of all, I think what's been really interesting to me is the, the conversation has really lacked any kind of focus um, on the potential that these technologies have uh, for reducing or for enabling the, the reduction in, in greenhouse gas emissions um, or for increasing um, uh, social um, benefits in, in developing countries or here at home. Um, I think that's interesting for a number of reasons. First of all, it seems like everyone in the industry is just sort of getting on with their business and not really worrying about this. Um, or perhaps it seems that the benefits that these technologies potentially have for the environment and um, for economic development um, are just not something that, that's part of the discussion. Um, so I think that's interesting for a few reasons, um, and I'm going to get into that in a minute. Uh, but mostly I think it's interesting because the, the opportunity is, is so compelling. Um, and so obviously you know, there, there should be um, you know, a, a, get, a let's get down to business attitude. Um, I think there, there is at least a sense from my perspective, an opportunity to really make the case from, from a, a, another perspective as well. So just to go through a, a few statistics that we've been observing, which I think drive our, our perspective. Um, one is uh, the, the growth in global populations. Um, we currently have a global population of 7 billion people, uh, which is expected to grow 2.3 million, two, sorry, 2.3 billion over the next uh, eight years. Um, and as you can see from this chart, hopefully, um, the vast majority of that is expected to focus in urban areas. So of that, um, that population growth, almost all of it will be in an in, uh, in urban environment. Um, so what does that mean? Um, that means that we're going to continue to have um, very uh, um, difficult challenges when it comes to uh, resource scarcity in an urban environment, um, transportation challenges as more and more people move, move into cities, um, and challenges when it comes to um, bringing the resources that, that these people need into a single place. Um, so the bottlenecks that, that occur with water and food and electricity are, be going, are going to become even more pronounced um, as time goes on and as more people live within an urban environment. A second trend which has really driven our perspective is the growth in connectivity. Uh, we see that 74% of Europeans and 78% of Americans now have home internet access. Uh, we see that um, globally uh, internet access has grown 110% um, in a very short time frame. Um, and uh, cell phone ownership um, is, is very rapidly increasing as well. What we also see is growth in M to M connectivity, um, something that you know, analysts are projecting will continue to increase rapidly. And that's being accompanied by growth in revenue from the deployment of these technologies. So um, you know, with 23% sustained annual growth in, in the M to M industry projected until the year 2020, 
Um, this is really one of the bright spots in, in the global economy, um, particularly um, within the technology space. So these, what these three trends mean in, in combination is really uh, a, an opportunity for solving some of the, the world's greatest problems um, using the trends in, in technological advancement um, that we see are occurring anyway. So just to talk a little bit about um, how MTEM technologies um, have an impact on uh, um, saving um, resources and on the environment. Um, to take a, a case study on, on precision agriculture, we, we looked at uh, some work being done by, by John Deere on their iSolutions um, uh, product line, um, and some studies that have been conducted by the um, USDA and uh, BSR. Um, and we found that through the implementation of, of uh, an MTEM system in a, a particular case in, in the, the US Midwest, um, you can reduce emissions um, in a variety of instances, whether it's cattle production or whether it's by saving um, fuel uh, for, for uh, harvesting crops, um, or if it's uh, on uh, saving seeds, um, which leads to monetary savings as well. So we, we're very excited about the fact that there's a real intersection between uh, the opportunity to um, reduce wasted resources, reduce uh, greenhouse gas emissions, and also save money. Um, and this is obviously the, the perspective from which the, uh, the companies that are offering these solutions are, are, um, are, are offering them to their, their uh, potential clients.